picture, video, and let me know. Fill me in. What have you been spending your time doing? Where have you gone? Um, have you, are you baking? Are you making something? Let me know. I want to see your pictures. All right. So um, this week we have some fun stuff happening. So let's start, shall we? <laughs> Thank you. 
loving me shine from the inside out and that the world will see you live in me you know me and you love me you feel me so send me to shine from the inside out and that the world will see you live in me morning. I am so excited to be able to share with you today's story. So today's story is about Elijah and the prophets of Baal. Does anybody 
remember when we learnt about the Ten Commandments. It was back when we were still together in Sunday school. We spent a good few weeks learning about the Ten Commandments. I hope that you can remember some things that we learnt. Um, today's story is going to focus on the First Commandment. So the First Commandment is all about putting God first. It says that God is the one true God and that we should only worship him. However, there was a problem because back when today's story was set in the Old Testament book of First Kings, not everyone worshipped God alone. In fact, many people had begun to worship a stone statue as a god, a god called Baal. Even the king of the country, King Ahab, had turned away from God and started to worship Baal. We know from learning in Sunday school about the Ten Commandments and all of the other stories that we have done. We know that God is the only God. But people had begun to forget this. So God sent some very special people to do a very special job. Now this morning's story is slightly different because we've got a video to show you all. So Eva is going to put the video in now and then we're going to come back and have a little bit of a chat about the video. I hope that you enjoy it. King Ahab and his evil queen Jezebel have led Israel astray by worshipping other gods. The land is gripped by a terrible drought. While the prophets of God have been under siege by Jezebel's orders to kill them, the worship of Baal has flourished. Elijah, God's prophet, demands to see Ahab. Ahab went to meet Elijah, and when he saw him, Ahab shouted, There you are, the biggest troublemaker in Israel! Elijah answered, You're the troublemaker, not me. You and your family have disobeyed the Lord's commands by worshipping Baal. Call together everyone from Israel and have them meet me on Mount Carmel. Be sure to bring along the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Asherah who eat at Jezebel's table. Ahab got everyone together. Then they went to meet Elijah on Mount Carmel. Elijah stood in front of them and said, How much longer will you try to have things both ways? If the Lord is God, worship him. But if Baal is God, worship him. The people did not say a word. Then Elijah continued, I am the Lord's only prophet, but Baal has 450 prophets. Bring us two bulls. Baal's prophets can take one of them, kill it, and cut it into pieces. Then they can put the meat on the wood without lighting the fire. I will do the same thing with the other bull, and I won't light a fire under it either. The prophets of Baal will pray to their God, and I will pray to the Lord. The one who answers by starting the fire is God. That's a good idea, everyone agreed. Elijah said to Baal's prophets, There are more of you, so you go first. Pick out a bull and get it ready, but don't light the fire. Then pray to your God. They chose their bull. Then they got it ready and prayed to Baal all morning, asking him to start the fire. They danced around the altar and shouted, Answer us, Baal! But there was no answer. At noon, Elijah began making fun of them. Pray louder, he said. Baal must be a god. Maybe he's daydreaming or, or using the toilet or, or traveling somewhere. Or maybe he's asleep and you have to wake him up. The prophets kept shouting louder and louder and they cut themselves with swords and knives until they were bleeding. This was the way they worshipped and they kept it up all afternoon. But there was no answer of any kind. Elijah told everyone to gather around him while he repaired the Lord's altar. Then he used 12 stones to build an altar in honor of the Lord. Each stone stood for one of the tribes of Israel, which was the name the Lord had given to their ancestor Jacob. Elijah dug a ditch around the altar, large enough to hold about 13 quarts. He placed the wood on the altar. Then they cut the bull into pieces and laid the meat on the wood. He told the people, 
Fill four large jars with water and pour it over the meat and the wood. After they did this, he told them to do it two more times. They did exactly as he said, until finally the water ran down the altar and filled the ditch. When it was time for the evening sacrifice, Elijah prayed, Our Lord, you are the God of Abraham, Isaac and Israel. Now prove that you are the God of this nation and that I, your servant, have done this at your command. Please answer me so that these people will know that you are the Lord God and that you will turn their hearts back to you. The Lord immediately sent fire and it burned up the sacrifice, the wood and the stones. It scorched the ground everywhere around the altar and dried up every drop of water in the ditch. When the crowd saw what had happened, they all bowed down and shouted, The Lord is God! The Lord is God! Okay, welcome back guys after that video. I hope that you loved it as much as I did. I thought it was a wonderful video just to tell the story of Elijah and the prophets of Baal. So now we're just going to have a little think about what that story means for us as Christians, as followers and friends of Jesus. So let's have a think. Baal was just a statue and he couldn't answer the prayers of the people. He couldn't do what everyone was asking him to do because he wasn't God. But God, the true God, can do all things even the things that seem impossible. And sometimes we forget that. Sometimes we can put our trust in other things in the world, like other people or even ourselves. But other people cannot do the things that God can do because they are not God. And it is important to remember God's greatness and to know that he is the only true God. If we ask God to do something and it is in his plan for us, he will make it happen. But we have to pray to God and talk to God and tell him what's worrying us and talk to him about what we want. And sometimes we won't always get it because sometimes that's not in our plan. But if we talk to God, we're putting our trust in him and it allows him to be able to do wonderful things in our lives. Before we finish up this morning, let's just pray together. So let's bow our heads. God, thank you that you are the true and living God. Thank you that we can get to know you in our lives. Help us to love and obey you in our everyday lives. Lord, we thank you for Sunday Space Online, that even though we cannot meet in person, we can meet online together to talk and share about you. Lord, we thank you for your stories which teach us the way that we should live. And Lord, help us to put you first in our lives today and every day. Amen. Thank you so much, guys, and I hope that you love today's story, and hopefully I will see you all very soon. Bye! Hi everyone, just a reminder of our memory verse again this week. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Psalm 27 verse 1. Don't forget everybody, send in a video of you saying the memory verse and Buddy and I will come and bring a surprise for you. Just a little thank you because we appreciate you sending in your videos, but we want to hear from you. Right, Buddy? Yeah. So if you haven't sent it in, send it in. We want to come and see you and that's all we got really. I think he wanted to spend more time at the beach. He's kind of bummed that we had to come back home. It's hard being a dog. You know what I mean? It's hard. It's a hard life. See you guys next week. Say bye, buddy. Say bye.
Bye, guys.